Hey yo, welcome back. Alt Life Yoga. Spend some time uh, doing a little bit of flow on the mat, stretching, strengthening, challenging ourselves a little bit. Uh, a lot of breathing because breathing's great. Uh, I'm April and I have a confession to make. I am addicted to TED Talks. If you don't know what TED Talks are, um, write that down and go check that out when you're done watching this because this is going to be great too. But TED Talks will like change your life. Amazing people getting together, talking about technology, entertainment, design, just totally cool stuff that these people have to say. Um, I was watching one, YouTube will just go, hey, you like TED Talks, watch this. Um, this woman, Caroline McHugh, I'll put a link to it, I think, because I really think you should go check it out. And she was talking about how we can practice the art of being ourselves by finding the note that we are supposed to be singing with our lives and then going out and singing it. And not necessarily, you know, that we have to be singers and it doesn't, she said, it doesn't dictate what you do with your life. What matters is how you do it. And she also spoke about these people who have found this note to be sung. They are in essence described as larger than life, but how can we be larger than life? Life's a really big thing. Those are really big shoes to fill. What makes these people seem so large? It's the fact that they're taking up more space. They're taking up more of the world around them than some of us feel like we're allowed sometimes, right? We often feel like we're only permitted to occupy our own little square around our feet. And we don't really burst out of that because we're not sure if we're permitted. Well, I got news for you. <laughs> Shaking the camera. You are totally permitted. Absolutely. In fact, you don't even need me to tell you. You don't need anybody else's permission in order to do whatever really jives with you, whatever truly lets you sing out that note that you are supposed to be singing in the world. So let's get outside of ourselves a bit, right? Finding some space, stretching open, and hopefully feeling really awesome while we do it. I'll meet you on the mat. We're going to start off today in hero's pose because I'm going to do a lot of front of the thigh warming up. Um, it is really comfortable for me just to sit like this. I'm seated back on my heels. You might take a little calf smooshing down and then there's room for the knees to bend or you can put something underneath your hips. And that might be that you sit up on a blanket or a pillow in between the knees or um, today's block of choice because I still don't have one is H.P. Lovecraft, Great Tales of Horror. Uh, so I'm gonna sit on Cthulhu, right in between my heels, and then maybe give a little extra lift. And then if you maybe have, I don't know, two volumes of H.P. Lovecraft sitting around, um, I've got some Harry Potter, uh, that might be good. Big, big books, something to sit up on, and then hopefully your knees aren't screaming at you. If your knees are still angry with you, sit your toes on the floor, Fold your legs up, sit in a chair, who the heck cares? Let's just focus on the breath for a moment. So close your eyes so that we can turn inward and start to settle into this seat. Relax your shoulders down. Feel your ears lift up and notice the weight of your hips where they land, be it on a book, a block, a chair, the floor, your heels. See if you can relax into your knee joints. And notice that as your arms become heavier, your chest begins to become more open. Courage is core. In Latin, it's heart. So from this open heart space, we possess the courage to be able to move out into the world, to take out more space, and to let our note be sung. Take your palms into your heart and feel the palms pushing together to open up your chest a little bit more. 
take a deep breath in and twist over towards your right just pulling the right shoulder back and then inhale come back to center twisting over towards your left bring back to center deep breath in exhale twisting right inhale coming to the front exhale twisting left this time see if you can reach your ears up as you come to the center and then push the shoulders down as you twist over to the right inhale back to center last time twisting over to the left and then come back to the middle come up off of your block and you're going to take the legs out in front of you and take the block with you as you come down to lay on your back i'm going to take the block and put it in between my knees and then feel my inner thighs squeeze the block together and this is going to plant the whole spine down on the floor and then keep squeezing into the block take your knees up above your chest spread the toes apart and then take the arms up above the head see if you can stretch out through your fingers let the backs of the hands be on the floor and then let the outsides of your shoulders be down on the floor and then squeeze in the block and take another deep breath in and then release your feet down to the floor and your arms down by your sides. I'm pretty sure that's the first time I've breathed in through my nose in about a week. I'm really excited about that. Start to maybe bring the heels in a little bit more and walk your shoulder blades underneath your back. We're going to start off warming up in bridge pose. So push into your feet, lift the hips up and squeeze the block up into your hips. Good. Take another deep breath in. Go ahead and lower down. And so we'll go for about three breaths, two more times. Press into the feet, lift the hips up, keep squeezing the block up and into the sky, maybe rolling shoulders underneath your back and holding hands with yourself. Take another deep breath in. Exhale, lower down. Now if you want to, you can keep the block there or your book, you can take it out. But see if you can keep that same sort of activation. Push into the feet, lift the hips up, Walk the shoulders underneath, and then without taking the knees together, keep the knees facing forward, draw the inner thighs up and in towards your hips. Notice how you might have gotten a little bit more back bend. Breathe in, and then start to lower on down. And bring the knees into your chest, give yourself a hug. Rock a little bit side to side. And then open the arms up, take the knees over towards your right. Start off with a twist. If it feels good in your neck, look towards the left fingertips. Reach the arms apart. Breathe in. Exhale. Come back to center. Bring the knees up and then over to the other side. Looking over at your right shoulder, if that feels okay for your neck, take a deep breath in. And then on your exhale, come back to center. Bring the knees up. Rock yourself up to a seat. And turn around again. So I say... Um, if it's okay for your neck because one of my cardinal rules is if that was a terrible idea to listen to somebody else's direction um, stop doing that especially with your body because you don't want to hurt yourself right we're going to come up into boat pose but we're going to do it with the block first you're going to take the block in between your knees and then roll the shoulders behind your heart so that the ears lift up back is really straight come just up onto the top of the tailbone and then keep squeezing your block up towards your face and pushing the feet out maybe extending the arms and deep breath in and, and then give yourself a rest take your block your book away and we're going to come up in again squeezing the inner thighs in without taking the legs together you don't want to necessarily knock the knees against each other keep some space so that you have more flexion in the pelvis lift the knees up and shoulder blades lift back heart is open Squeeze the inner thighs up. And one more deep breath in. And then give yourself a squeeze. Release. And we'll come from here. Swing the legs behind. Come into table pose. And take your left arm up and open. Nice big twist. And then thread the needle coming down underneath your shoulder. And take the palms on top of each other. 
and move the palms away from you. Maybe rotate a little bit more in your spine. And then take the right hand down. Push the left arm up and open into the ceiling. And get a little twist. And then come into side gate. So moving your left leg back. Notice my right toes come behind me a little bit. And then move the shoulder blades into the back. Move the heart upwards a little bit more towards the ceiling and extend the left leg so far back that it starts to lift up off of the floor. Deep breath in. in and then lower back down in a table pose. We'll adjust the knee as the toes come behind you. And then take the right arm open and threading the needle. So it's underneath the armpit, the outside of my shoulder, my the side of my head are on the floor and the palms come down. Now you don't have to keep the palms together if you don't like it, but maybe you can notice some more space opening up in the back, pushing the palms together. And then release the left hand underneath your shoulder. Take the right arm open, deep twist. And then start to move the right leg behind you, pivot the left foot behind. Now take the shoulder blades into the back of your heart so that your heart moves forward. Big open back bend. And then the arm comes back, not out of the shoulder, but connected to the shoulder. Right leg lifts, really long, deep breath in. Exhale, come back into table pose. And real quick, we'll visit child's pose. Move your knees out, sit your hips back on your heels, stretch the arms forward. And reach out a little bit more through your right fingertips, feel your right hip pull back, breathe in. Relax as you exhale, walking the left fingertips a little bit forward, pulling the left hip back, breathe in, exhale, and then pulling yourself up into table pose, and then from table pose, taking a bird dog or extended table, stretch your left leg back, now squeeze your inner thighs in and notice your hips lift up, press really strong into the left hand as you take the right arm forward. Connecting at your center, but feeling the fingertips and the heels get longer apart. And you might even notice the body coming in more towards the midline this way. And long back of the neck, breathe in. And then lower the hand, the knee down. Push down into your left shin, stretch the right leg back and extend outwards through the leg. And then if you have a back bend going on, see if you can take it out of the waist. Connecting at the center and reaching the left arm forward. And try to keep your head on your spine. Long back of the neck, releasing that tension and finding space. Reach out longer, breathe in. Exhale, take the hand and the knee down. And we'll take a couple of cat cows. Exhale, rounding the spine. Inhale, opening up the front of the spine, opening up your heart. Exhale, cat, and one more time. Deep breath in, cow. Deep breath out, cat. And Look forward, curl your toes under, lift the hips up, maybe step the feet back a little bit, downward facing dog. Relax the inner edges of your heels, relax your knees a little bit and spread up through the fingers, opening the heart. And a deep breath in. Exhale. Look forward and walk your feet up towards the front of your mat. And all 10 toes face forward, inhale, flat back. Exhale, fold down. Inhale, reach the arms open, stand all the way up. Exhale, hands down at your heart. And sun salutation A, one time, deep breath in. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. And then plant the hands, step back to the top of your plank. Pull the heels back, pull the chest forward. Maybe lower the knees, elbows to ribs. And then keep moving forward, keep the legs active, up dog, exhale, downward facing dog. And keep moving, breathe in, look forward, exhale, step your feet up to the front of your mat. Inhale, halfway lift, flat back, exhale, fold down, inhale, stand all the way up, exhale, hands come down into the heart. Okay, back to the block or the tails of each feel of craft. You're going to turn to the back of your mat and take the block in between your thighs. And for me, it feels better the higher up on the thighs that I get so that I can really find a good squeeze. Also, my block, my book is not very large. 
So you're going to make sure the toes still face forward, a little bit of distance in between the legs. Now take your hands to your hips. Feel your hips come together as you squeeze the block forward. Then so relax. And then you squeeze the block forward, hips become really active. Then take the arms up, breathe in. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, open your heart up. And then a little bend into the knees, keep squeezing the block, the block, the book forward, and walk your hands forward into the top of your plank. Now energize the legs, push them back, come to the tiptoes, breathe in. Exhale, elbows to the ribs. Keep squeezing into the legs, come onto the tops of your feet, upward dog. Curl the toes, downward dog. Keep squeezing the block behind you now because you're still lifting up with the inner thighs. Relax the head. And deep breath in. Bend into the knees a little bit so that you can walk the hands backwards towards your toes. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold down. Inhale, stand up. Exhale, hands at your heart. We'll scooch forward. We're going to come into chair pose using the block. So sit down. Squeeze the block up into your hips. Feel the block coming upwards, right? Lifting, and then take the arms up. Now take up space with your back. Reach the tailbone back and the arms forward without taking shoulders into ears. Maybe the arms are wider. Then push down in the feet. Reach up to the fingertips. Exhale. Inhale, stand up. Exhale, hands come down into your heart. Okay. Remove le brick, le book, le block. And put it up at the front of your mat just so that it's there in case we'll use it later. You know, press down into the feet, reach the arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Okay. Inhale, halfway lift. Now plant your hands and step your left leg back and maybe your right leg a little bit further forward. You can always grab ankles to bring feet further forward. Now push down to the feet. Feel length come into your spine and length into your legs. Really strong feet come all the way up. High lunge. And notice how my feet stayed really full. Well, now my legs are really steady. Take a deep breath in. We're going to open up into horse stance with wide arms. So take that back heel in. Bend into the knees and spread the arms out. And now push into the pinky finger, pinky toe edge of your foot and squeeze the hips in so that you're not letting it come behind you but underneath. And go a little bit lower. And then lift the back heel, come up high lunge, deep breath in. Exhale, take the hands down. Step back, downward dog, take a rest or come forward in your plank Elbows touch the ribs. Open the heart by taking the shoulders behind you. Curl the toes. Downward dog. And deep breath in. Deep breath out. Stretch the right leg back behind you. Push out through your heel. Push out through your fingertips. Notice the space that happens. Look forward. Step your right foot up to the front of the mat. Come into a twist, taking the right arm open. Exhale, come down. Good. Stand all the way up on your right leg. Good. Standing splits, deep breath in. Exhale, lower the foot down. Inhale, flat back. Only halfway, going to continue. Take the fingertips down, step your right leg back. And then if you've got more space, maybe you just awkwardly scooch the toe forward by whatever means necessary, right? And then press down into the feet. Feel steady in the legs. Keep squeezing the inner thighs in towards your hips. Reach the arms up. High lunge. Good. And keep getting long in the legs. Open the heart. And then come into horse stance, taking your heels in. You might have to adjust the feet a little bit. That's fine. Take your shoulder blades in together, but then reach your fingertips out like you're hugging onto a giant redwood. And then sit down a little bit lower. And then come back to high lunge facing the front of the room. You'll adjust the back heel, maybe the back foot. Pull the fingertips up, press the heel back. And on your exhale, take the hands down. 
Good. Step the foot back, inhale, lengthen, exhale, down dog or lower to the bottom of your push-up, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog, open heart, exhale, downward dog. Good. Take a deep breath in, let a deep breath out. Stretch your left leg wall back behind you. Push out through the heel, push down in your fingertips. Look forward, step the left foot up to the front of your mat. Squeeze the hips in together, even hips, open up, twist. And deep breath in, and then take both hands down. Stepping forward, standing splits. It could be a lot of steps. It could be like, whoop, and then kind of get here, or maybe you extend the legs out, really reaching the, the ears towards the floor. Breathe in, exhale, lower down. Both feet forward fold, inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold down. Stand all the way up. Reach the arms open. Exhale, hands come down into your heart. If we're going to do some side bending, then also play around a little bit with the weight in the feet. So bring the feet closer together. And then take your arms up. Push down into the feet and open to the fingers. And then bring your low ribs down just a little bit. So take a deep breath in. Exhale, side bend over to your right. And then push down in your left foot. See what happens. As you breathe in, come back up. Exhale, side bend over to your left. See if you can keep the ribs connected. Push down into your right foot. Maybe come out a little bit more. And then stand up. Exhale, forward fold. Bring your feet a little bit further apart. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, plant the hands. Step back to the top of your plank. And take a deep breath in here. Lengthen the legs out. Exhale, down dog or chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Lengthen the legs. Curl the toes under. Downward facing dog. And stretch your right leg back behind you. This time maybe scorpion dog where you bend the knee and stack the hips open. And deep breath in. Look forward. Step your right foot up to the front of your mat. From here, take your left heel down and open up to warrior two. Notice my arms are at the same angle. The knee is going directly over the toes. And then lift your inner thighs up so that you can feel the spine lift a little bit more, right? So you can be down or lifted. Good. Side angle, take your left arm down and Open it up to really get into the side of the ribs. Good. And then let it drop down. Reach the left fingertips back. Straighten into both legs. And then turn all ten toes to face towards the side wall. Move your hands to your hips. Lift the heart up. Take the elbows back. Maybe soft bend into the knees. Fold forward. And drop your fingertips down and relax your head. Imagine that all of the weight of your pelvic bones, so say like maybe five pounds or so that those bones weigh, that just went into your head. So your head is heavier, your hips are lighter. And press down strong into the feet. Inhale, flat back. Little bend into the knees, hands to the hips. Lift all the way up right from underneath your bum, under butt. And then take the right toes to face forward. Lift the left heel up. Deep breath in, high lunge. Exhale, plant the hands. Step the right leg back. Come to the top of your plank. And then lengthen out through your ears and your right heel. Exhale, lower the right heel down. And one more time, lift the right leg up. And then lower the foot down. Downward dog or come forward. Squeeze the elbows back. Inhale, back bend. Exhale, downward dog. And take a deep breath in. Exhale. And then stretch your left leg back. Bend into the knee. Stack the hips open if you want. Open up the front of that thigh. And then stretch the leg up. Look forward. Step the left foot up to the front of your mat. Right heel down, warrior two. Good. Shoulder blades connected. Fingers radiate outwards. Strong lunge in the left knee. And then lift the inner thighs in. Good. So notice how my hip might come back a little bit. If I zip this in, I'm very vertical. 
Taking the left elbow down, roll the right arm open this time. Keep pushing down into the feet. And a deep breath in. And then let it come down. Reach back with the right arm. Both legs straight. And then turn all ten toes to face towards the other wall. This time take your arms behind your back. Little bend into the knees. Pull the knuckles down. Notice my arms aren't straight. Yours could be. I've got a little bend here just to create more space in the shoulders. And then pull the knuckles down to the floor. And on your exhale, come forward into a fold. Now the really hard thing, stop lifting your head up. Right? See if you can relax into your neck. If it's comfortable for you to pull the knuckles away from your back, great. If you want to have them more connected, awesome. If you're like, why are you doing this to me, April? Put your fingertips on the floor. But if you've still got the vine, take a deep breath in. Lift the spine forward. And then move the hands to your hips from wherever you are. Stand all the way up. Use your underbutt. And then turn the left toes forward. Lift the right heel up. Go slow. Maybe adjust the feet. And then split the legs apart. Open the arms up. High lunge. Exhale. Take the hands down. Step your left leg back. Top of your plank. Lengthen your body and lengthen so much through the left leg that it lifts up. And then lower it down. And one more time. Deep breath in. Exhale, lower. Good. Inhale, come to the tiptoes. Exhale, down dog or chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Deep breath in. Exhale. Look forward towards your hands. Lower the knees down. Widen the knees out. Sit back. Child's pose. And then start to walk the hands back underneath your shoulders. Push yourself up. Come to take a seat. We're going to move into a really deep inner thigh stretch. This is called frog. And the idea is that we hold it for a long time and relax into it. So a couple things. If you want some pillows, sweet. Go grab pillows. If you do not have pillows at your disposal, you do, however, have a mat. And you can probably fold in the ends of this mat a bit and then come into table pose this long ways on your mat. Now my hips are above my knees and they're going to stay in the same line. So I'm just going to move my knee out and then my other, and you might stop here and say, oh no, no, April, this is enough. If this is enough, awesome. Hang out here. Maybe let yourself come down a little bit. If you've got more space, maybe moving the knee out. I just happen to have a lot of um, open space, a lot of extension this way. It's just the way my body is built. But also spending more time in these shapes makes it a little easier. So you can come down onto forearms or you can stay up on your hands. You might be way more open than me and you have your pelvis down on the floor. Now look back towards your feet. Are they behind your ankle? So you can see that they just shoot directly back, just like when you're in the lunge. If you have them back behind your hips, move them out. Relax the insides of your feet. Make sure that your hips didn't come too far forward or too far back and let yourself soften. See if you can release any tension. If you're holding the shoulders up, see if you can let the body relax down further into space. And one thing I notice about stretching out anything around the hips, we often say to ourselves, mm, no, 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 I have tight hips, I have tight hips, right? I hear that all the time. And I think we also define to ourselves exactly how tight those hips are, and we limit ourselves by that. So if we're in these places where it's more so gravity's taking us over, kind of like this, like in frog, if we rather than go, oh, nope, this is, how, this is how tight I am, this is how much I can stretch, this is it, rather than that, if we kind of relax the thigh muscles a little bit, try to still our breath and still our brain, we might start to feel a little bit more at peace with the shape. And then after finding peace with the shape, maybe the shape starts to make peace and open up a little bit more space for us. But we don't find that if we hold up here. So take another deep breath in. Deep breath out. 
And then move the hands up underneath your shoulders. And bring one knee in about an inch. And then another inch. And then you inch it in until you can bring the feet in. Slowly moving the body back. And then with the knees still above your hips, move the arms forward. Heart melting shape, Anahat Asana. We also call this puppy dog. A little bit like down dog for the heart opening, but a little bit less strong, or maybe a lot of it less strong. And move the hands back underneath your shoulders, and then come down to laying on your belly. You can unfold your mat if you folded yourself up. You're going to come into Sphinx Pose and let the legs come pretty far apart. Let the tops of your legs be on the floor and lift your inner thighs up. So we're starting to get active already. And then move the elbows back, the heart forward. And then you might take the hands a little bit further out. Push down into the hands. Don't let your shoulders lift up. Lift the heart and maybe the elbows. And this could be a lot. You could stay here, you could come down from here. Maybe you've got more space to press further into the hands, coming up into seal pose, and then keep the legs lengthened, lifting the chest forward, maybe even taking a little bit of a claw into the fingertips to move the low ribs forward. And take a deep breath in, and then lower on down. Make a pillow for your head with your hands, bring your feet closer together. You can rest a cheek, or your forehead, and let the heels gently rock side to side. And take the hands underneath your shoulders, press yourself up to a seat, and then lay over on your right side. So I'm laying on my right hip. I'm gonna take my left hand underneath my shoulder and my right arm is going to stretch out towards, if I were parallel to a wall, it would go right over there. So it's not going forward, straight out from the shoulder. Palm is down, shoulders down, and we're in a twist. Okay. Now, if you want a little bit more of a twist, you can look over towards your right hand. If that was a terrible idea, put your right ear back on the floor. I'm just going to be here so that you can hear me. And then you can stretch your top leg back and your bottom leg forward, and maybe even if you're looking out at your right, your left side, your left hand, as you stretch them out in front of your face, that might feel pretty good. Deep breath in. And then take the hand back on your mat, bend into the bottom leg, bring the top leg onto it, bring the right arm in, lift yourself up. Call this a mud flap transition. Just scooching over one hip for the other. And then right hand under right shoulder, left arm out. Maybe you stay down on the left ear. Maybe you move on to the right ear. It could be different on each side. And then you'll take the bottom leg out in front of you. The top leg extends back. Maybe you open the right arm as well. Okay. You could be on either side with the ear, deciding which side feels better to you. And then take up more space, reach outwards, deep breath in. And then right hand underneath shoulder, bending bottom leg, top leg, come on up. And then come on to your back. So we've had a back bend, we've had a rotation, one last thing, inversion, just being a little bit more active with the body. Push the feet up. Push the outsides of the shoulders down. Keep the hips down on the mat. Extend the inner thighs up away from you. Deep breath in. Exhale. Bring the feet down onto the floor. And from here, extending your legs out. Letting your feet flop open. Lock the shoulder blades underneath your back, keeping all of that open space in your heart, letting the palms roll up. Come back to your breath. Come back to the ease of simply being in your body. And you stay here as long as you like. I'm going to start to come up.
When you do come up, coming up slowly, softly, not jarring or shaking the body. Still feeling that sweet ease after the practice. Thank you for sharing this time and this practice with me. Thank you for being here to breathe, for sharing perhaps a little bit of this note that you were meant to sing in this world, and most of all for taking up space, for getting outside of your body a little bit, maybe a little bit outside of your comfort zone. The light in my heart bows and honors to this incredible, totally awesome light within your own. Namaste.